you remember the last time Spencer Drake joined us, we went through each and every single one of the albums that he brought with him, and he's brought more with him, and he's got the 45 covers too, and I love this kind of stuff because it's really easy, but before we start to get over to, uh, to talk about the 19 Sire albums and the 45s, tell us how you got involved with Sire Records to begin with. Yeah, it's a great story. Um... Uh, it's one of those stories in my life that uh, I really love. Uh, I was waiting online in a movie theater. There was a, uh, a guy there who was working for the theater named uh, Stephen Taylor. And so I started talking with him, and um, he said, uh, you know, we started talking about what you do, blah, blah, blah. And I told him I was a type uh, designer for album covers, and I, I designed album covers. So he said, well, I need a type guy. I never forgot that, the type guy. And so I said, I said, what are you doing? He said, well, I got this artist, Richard Hell, I'm working with on an album called uh, Blank Generation. And if And if you know the history of punk, it's one of the top albums ever done on Sire Records. And then that's what led me into Sire Records. And so I worked a part of that album. Stephen Taylor was doing the illustration. And uh, that's how I started. And literally, I was thrown into the uh, into the mix of Sire Records through uh, John Gillespie, then art director, and of course the famous Seymour Stein, who, by the way, has a great book out called Siren Song about his life. Um, he was the owner of Sire Records, and of course, he was one of the founders of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Which, uh, by the way, uh, myself and my partner Judith are in with our collection of album covers and 45s. But that's how we started with Sire. Um, I uh, started, I think the first project we'll, we'll talk about oh, is uh, yeah. a I, sl I, sleeve for uh, Talking Heads, Take Me to the River, very famous single by uh, Talking Heads, and was part of the More Buildings and um, More Buildings and Food album, which was uh, that came out, and uh, that sleeve is very uh, important because it was in a Museum of Modern Art show in 2010, co co curated by Laurie Anderson, and uh, it was a great music graphic show at that time uh, called Looking at Music Side Two. And I remember getting this 45 in the record store. It was Jack's Music Store in Red Bank, New Jersey. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. And on this cover, it's in black and white. And right in the middle, you have a picture of a church. It's Full Gospel Tabernacle with Pastor Al Green. Right. Now, Al Green is also uh, not the pastor, but a famous artist, a right. musical act, right? Right. Um, right? I forget off the top of my head, but... If you want to get romantic, just put on an Al Green album and away you go, right? <laughs> um, where did you find this full gospel tabernacle to, to take Well, I didn't find it. This What what would happen in something like stuff that I did uh, uh, sometimes uh, with Sire was they give me a photograph, which so Talking Heads gave me that photograph. Uh, I came from uh, David Byrne, or, yeah. uh, and so uh, basically I did the typography on it to to, clean, to make it look good, and uh, the artwork on the bottom, I, I used Electroset Waves art, which makes it kind of cool, and um turned out to be a really nice sleeve. Yeah, the, the A side is Take Me to the River, and the B side is Thank You for Sending Me an Angel. And on the back side, the flip side, says Full Gospel Tabernacle, dedicated to the glory of God, December 19th, 1976. The church fits that architecture of the time. It's something I'm into for whatever reason. But I know uh, David Byrne was just having fun with the fact that it was Reverend Al Green as pastor. <laughs> All right, let's move to the next one that's on the list. Well, we got our famous... The Ramones. The famous uh, great Ramones. Ruins. Oh, this is fantastic. What a great album. And this was John Holmstrom did the artwork uh, from a concept, which was given him, and he refined it into an amazing illustration. I did the typography on it, uh, basically throughout the inner sleeve and for the cover. Uh, a great photograph in the back cover by Danny Fields, the manager, who was very good at photography and has actually had a photo book uh, recently put out on the Ramones, his work on the Ramones. So it's kind of an iconic cover you know, and um, well, it, it's interesting when you look at the back. OK, and I, I would for those of us who remember the time when you'd buy the albums, 
Maybe you're eating a bowl of Cheerios for breakfast and you got tired of looking at the back of the Cheerios box. So maybe your record collection was near you, you pick it up and you start reading it. Or while the record was playing. Mm. After a while of watching it go around and around and around and the spindle at 33 and a half RPMs, you'd pick up the album, you'd look on the inside, you start reading the lyrics to the songs and then you'd, you'd find out who was on the album. This one has side one, side two on the back and then you have Johnny Ramone on guitar, Joey Ramone, lead vocals, Didi Ramone on the bass, Marky Ramone on the drums, produced and engineered by uh, T. Ed Really and Ed's, Early, Tommy Ed Early. Early. Who oh. is Tommy Ramone, really? Okay. You know? And, and mm -hmm. Ed Stasium. So I mean, big time. most kids would probably not, they would not even recognize that. You pointed right. it out. I didn't right. even, I, you know, just was that not, not even thinking of it. Then it's got all the other, uh, other people that were part of the recording. Then we get to the front cover concept by Gus McDonald. Did you work directly with Gus? Well, no. Actually, the thing that I worked on the typography, so what happened was Gus McDonald would be the person hooked up with John Holmstrom, who did the artwork. Right. And that's where the concept, right. it, it, it progresses into the whole thing uh, that way. Well, what it says here, album designed by Spencer Drake. So you True. took all the other parts and you put, put them, them together. together. And yeah. Exactly. That's and great. The ty typography. But, it, uh, you know, I was very strong in typography. So... Uh, you know, I was very lucky. I was very strong in typography, and that's the, you got to have the mixture of great typography with visualization. That's right. It's a photograph or art, and yeah, you 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 have to be able to put it all together to make it a complete work. And that's now fantastic. the inner sleeve is not there, but Bob Gruen had. I have to give him credit. He had photographs on the inside. Um, so oh, that yeah. was part of the deal. Chip Rock and Bob Gurley. Bob, yeah, Chip Rock and Bob Gurley. Now, the uh, Ramones official fan club, I wonder if it's still in operation. <laughs> P.O. Box 892, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10019, yeah, which, is, which is over by, uh, I, I guess, by Radio City Music Hall, that area. I don't know. Uh, probably no in the uh, 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 6th no. Avenue. All right, let's uh, take uh, a look at the next album cover well this is actually a 45 oh, got the 40 from that album this is a very famous sleeve ah. um, oh the more Ramones God, I can't get enough yeah, of this yeah don't come close uh, uh, the, the thing about the design is very interesting I saw that the letters were almost the same amount of letters uh, on each word and I said you know what why don't I blow this up and and just stack the type put a rule to hold it together on both sides and see how it looks. And I picked this typewriter face. Typewriter type I picked because it's very raw. And that's Ramones, if you know the Ramones, right. very raw. And so that's basically the feel of that. But um, um, can people find these art designs anywhere? Do you have No, it's them? hard. I mean, I even went, I, I've tried to get extras of it. It was difficult on eBay or, I mean, there, this is a really rare sleeve, I think, in it, as believe yeah, it or not. Yeah, well, we're down to, um, you're going to fear music. Fear music. Oh, what a great album. Let's talk about okay, this Okay, this, this is an album to talk about. It was in a, first of all, it was in a MoMA show in 2016, a uh, music graphic show, very famous show, and then it became picked by the Museum of Modern Art permanent collection as part of the collection, which is very amazing. Um, I co-designed it with Talking Heads. It's a great story. Um, Jerry Harrison visited Tina Weymouth's brother, who was an architect, and saw this patterned floor, and that's how it starts. And then all of a sudden, uh, that becomes the cover. Uh, Embossed. Yeah, uh, let let me just explain yeah. that that the floors, those metal type of floors. Yeah, right. I guess I guess what it was was a industrial metal. metal yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you painted it black. Uh, no, that's that that came from. Okay, so Queens Litho who printed it. Uh, it went through different stages, you know. Like the, the heads wanted real vinyl. I said, forget about that. Too much money. <laughs> then they went. Oh, they, wait, wait, they wanted a real vinyl album cover. Exactly. Really? Oh okay. yeah, it's too expensive. Forget about it. Then they went to some concept with. It, it was unreal, like a styrofoam box <laughs> with electric lights, and wow. you took the shrink wrap off. The yeah. type was underneath, and it disappeared. Uh, John Gillespie said, look at Spencer, I think we need a Russian scientist right now because the concepts are getting crazy. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, we ended up with this concept, and to make it easy, Queen Slitho did a board, a matte board. Um, I did the typography on it uh, with the heads and uh, came up with, I added this touch of a green, uh, yep. a day glow green type, 
put the type in a box which held it together on the front cover very simple design and by the way very interesting the last album cover not to have a barcode when i look at this i can't help but think of saint mark's place for whatever reason over first in saint mark's and you have all of those restaurants including the physical graffiti building which is across the street a lot of people think that that's in england it's not it's right, right over first in mark's place it's got a very uh village type of feel to it you know, Peter Seville, one of the great designers, uh, this cover was in a book called 100 Best Album Covers by the famous Storm Thorgerson. And uh, Peter Seville wrote a quote about it. He said, this is a great example of industrial, quote, art. Oh, I see, yeah. Cover. And that's the way they went on that. There were sleeves that I actually did were amazing that were never printed. Like David had a print, uh, 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 like an industrial drawing, you know, with the skeleton uh, type uh, ske sketches of a machine. Uh, gorgeous stuff and it was never printed uh, so there were certain things off this album which gave that industry a, a carryover visually what's the uh, next album that we have we have I'll, I'll, I'll let you explain what it looks like to the listener well this is uh a group shot uh, done by the famous Mick Rock, one of, the, one of his iconic photographs for the front cover. He approached it two different ways. He approached, first of all, shooting the group with leather jackets, and then he did a shoot without, with colored t-shirts. And I think what happened here is with the, the, the record label wanted a softer look to the group, try to commercialize it more. Um, but it, when I saw the two, actually, when I saw the two shots, with the leather jacket and without, I thought this cover was much more um, dynamic. So yeah, this uh, album by the Ramones, End of Century, is produced by Phil Spector. And side one kicks off with Do You Remember Rock and Roll? Followed by I'm Affected, Danny Says, Chinese Rock, The Return of Jackie and Judy, Let's Go. And then side two, Baby I Love You, I Can't Make It On Time, This Ain't Havana, Rock and Roll High School which Classic. all the kids love that song when that came out all the way and high risk insurance so you know a couple of nice tracks even if you're a marginal ramones fan or you weren't even a big time ramones fan there's something on that album i think you would like if you got a hold of it all so right. this is the, the inner insert. sleeve yeah. now this is a story and a half because they loved the in what i did with the inner sleeve oh, art that's right and that ended up being like overseas uh, on some 45s actually that visualization uh, which I didn't design, but it, uh, I saw that it was being used. And then this is an example of, I didn't design this, but this is a usage of that. But you know, they had a vote on the group and they wanted the, inner, there's a number of, of the group, the Ramones that wanted that inner sleeve visualization that I did for the cover, but it didn't go through. Oh, well, it you know what, it, it's kind of, how would you explain it? It's almost like a negative. Well, yeah, I converted the, the photograph into uh, a high contrast uh, at that time of black, just black and white, and that knock out all the mi middle tones. And then I put this nice orange background behind it. And, but like and, I said, and, they, and, and uh, you know what it's called in the old color scheme of uh, computers? Mustard right. stand. Oh, okay. Right? Wow, you know, it's, cool. it's got the uh, yellow and the red. That's fascinating. And then this was, this was a cover I didn't design, but you can see they used that Poster, posterization, that's what it's called, posterization. Uh, you knock out the, use that, I didn't design that, but you can see how they use that poster, posterized cover yeah, and, overseas. And, oh, uh, if you don't mind, I'm just no, gonna take it out. out. Take it out. Oh, man. look at that. Yeah. Man, that's a beauty. No scratches on it, just got a little dust. I haven't dust. played it, I haven't played it. I'll tell you, I haven't played it. It's never movies. been played once. Never been played. Wow. This, of course, oh, is look at this, yes. I mean, this is famous. Then, then there was the movie. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, Kip, was it Kip Randall? Who is the girl? I, oh, I forget wow. her name. I, maybe Patrick would know. Uh, it's Ramones, Rock and Roll High School. We all saw the movie. It was iconic. It was cultural. Um, and it's it's almost as if anybody that was going to high school at the time that this was out wanted to emulate what was going on in that rocks, uh, Rock and Roll High School. So side one, you have Rock and Roll High School. Produced and engineered by Ed Stasium. Ta -da. Remixed by Phil Spector. Music from the original motion picture soundtrack of Rock and Roll High School. I'm going to give you the uh, catalog number. SRK 6070. A New World Pictures release. And Do You Want to Dance? Do, 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 do you want to mm -hmm. dance? I love that. It's great. Uh, it goes back to 1979. Can you believe it? Wow. 
Tempus Fugit, Memento Mori, Degustibus, Nanus Dispentandum. All right, taste is not to be argued. Let's so this again. is a sleeve. Oh, I, I wow. should have brought it in earlier, but this is part of, I think, Fear of Music. It comes off the Fear of Music Talking uh, heads. album, a single called Cities. The Plastics, a group called The Plastics in Japan, uh, supplied the artwork. I did yeah. the typography. Yeah, it says artwork by The Plastics, yep. or by Plastics. The yeah, group that great. heads really like. They, they like it's the interesting. Japanese um, group. The color is, I don't think, something that would have been typical for the time period. Mm -hmm. And this is 1980. Well, maybe, all right, the fashion at the time was very interesting and almost uh, mimics the fashion, but you can you can see a, a Japanese influence on that. Right. Yeah, that's really Okay, neat. then we got the famous Pretenders album. Oh, came out, yeah. And I did, oh, I was man. fortunate to do the, the single Stop Your Sobbing for that album. And well, produced by Nick Lowe. I did not know that. Yeah, all right. Uh, from the album uh, Pretenders, which is that the black and album, white album. The black right? and white stark album. Stop was, Yourself. Well, it's actually Sorry. a colored shot of them on a white background, a group shot. It's a very, uh, the first album. And John Gillespie, the art director, said uh, before I was, uh, he gave me that assignment. He said, Spencer, will you hear this group we just signed called The Pretenders? He said, the DJs don't have to get paid money. Just put the needle on the record. It'll sell itself. Huh, that's, <laughs> I'll never that's, forget that yeah. one. So then, we get, right. so then years later, Bob Gruen calls me up and he says, uh, hey, do you want to work on Dee Dee's new album? I said, okay. And then uh, Judith and I went over to the Chelsea Hotel, met the, uh, Dee Dee and his girlfriend at that time, Vera Ramon King. And um, this album, which is a classic, uh, people have said to me, well, if you don't like the album, you'll love the cover. That's a classic line I've always gotten. And a, a, a lot of Bob Gruen photographs on there, which uh, he sent me a whole bunch of photographs. I said, you know what, usually it's, one photograph on the front usually you see, or one on the couple on the back. I said, I'm gonna use as many photographs as I can. And uh, Judith uh, had a lot to do with the logo, the D.D. King logo. We work with a great <laughs> letterer. And this came up and I thought it was a really great cover. And uh, I, you know, I, hip hop, going hip hop, D.D. going hip hop. Yeah, I, And you, this this album does have the barcode. When you started right. putting barcodes on the album, uh, was it a, kind of a, uh, how are we gonna put this? Oh with, God, with the it, art? it was terrible. Well, the, you know, they would do, first it started like, you gotta use the original size and then people would trunk, what they call truncated it. Right. So they made it very small and very thin and cut it in half and things like that started going on with, thank yeah. God, and try to make it less, uh, you know, whatever. But um, visually. I, I, I mean, all right, so now they have the barcodes, and my question is, did the artist make more money as a result of having the barcodes? Because it's not the <laughs> whole idea of tracking it, probably not. I like the tracks on this album. First, if you're listening, it is in, um, it's got the photos of DD, it's got his hat on. I mean, it kind of looks like that Kid Rock thing going on. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But this is in 19, um, let me see, let me see what year this is. And this is all, you know, by the way... Uh, oh, 1989. And Zach, all those yeah. photographs of Bob Gruen's photographs, they're amazing. Yeah, they're really I mean, cool. he's just really did a great shoot uh, on Dee Dee. And Dee Dee looks like he's having a lot of fun during the shoot, which is everything. And so it's standing in the spotlight, Dee Dee King, it's in pink and white, and he got your purple. And then on the backside, you have more of the album information, Sire at the bottom, and you know, more pictures of Dee Dee. And then let's go over side one. You got mashed potato time. Too much to drink, baby doll, poor little rich girl, commotion in the ocean. Side two is German kid, Brooklyn babe, emergency, the crusher. I want what I want when I want it. You know, just based on those titles now and and the album cover, this is. I would look at this and go, now I have to hear the album because this is. You know, a, you know what's amazing? I'm looking at the album. I never really noticed this, but sometimes I don't realize what I do. But look at the front cover. I mean. One picture is Dee Dee looking up at the logo. The other one, he's right in the center. He's like looking back, back. at you. It's very intense, actually. And uh, yeah, it made sense to use those photographs for the front. But even when you go to the back, there's so many great photographs. It's different. Yeah, it's a different I like thing. that one. All right. Now we're going to go to an era where I have to give credits here for Judith Salovitz. Yep. Sylvia Reed and myself combined to do some amazing graphics. So there's a there's a little bit of silence, a little bit of silence going on, and then all of a sudden, da 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 da. -da. 
Lou Reed. Lou Reed. The New York LP. He signed, I signed, Seymour Stein signed him, and this is a big album. It's just a uh, resurgence of his career. Uh, very big. Yeah. Uh, well, I will say this. When it came out, it was 1989, I think. 1989, 90. And I just liked the song Dirty Boulevard. Oh, it was like, you know, it I was gritty. It. it had a nice sound. It was like Lou. But, you know, sometimes with Lou, uh, you couldn't say everything was melodic, right? Right. Yes. But that one, <laughs> that one to me is like, hey, it's got a groove to it. It's kind of melodic. I, I, I It's catchy. So that particular track, if you haven't heard Dirty, Dirty Boulevard, you got to listen to that one. But the album cover itself, you got the, I guess, is this in an alley in the well, back? Where, where, Waring Abbott, uh, let me get, uh, tell you the story. Waring Abbott called me up and said, look, uh, Lou and Sylvia need a portfolio. Why don't you send your portfolio down? And that's how it starts. And then Sylvia comes to her office and Judith and I and Sylvia working together on this. I mean, it started with a photograph on the front, which uh, Lou saw or, or early. 1930s uh, German photograph and a, a group of guys in an alley, something like that title. And he said, well, I'll do that in a concept for the front cover. And that's how that shot by wearing each each individual stripped together yeah. uh, with a brick wall behind it. Um, and, and Lou's looking good here. He's got, you know, guns. He's in good shape. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I mean, all, all, I, all different pictures of Lou. And, and Sylvia went through a whole trip with Lou. Uh, she actually, I think she came up with the title of New York and he had a problem with it. And eventually he did, he did that title because Lou is New York. Was yeah. it really difficult to take the different photos based on the technology of the time and, and make it look like it's one photo? Well, here's a great, this is a great story. Uh, at that time, for the first time, they were using computers for separations. And then when you gave separations before printed, uh, you dealt with these overlays of, pla of uh, different overlays of color. And so I could go in there and just put piece, literally piece these figures together on computer uh, at the separator. And then I, I retouched a lot. And actually, Warner's told me, he says, Professor, stop getting in there. You're costing us money. But you had, <laughs> you had to, like, do that because of the shadows. And if you look at it, it's very, like, get everything lined up with the shadows and making it look like these people are together. But... That's what, that's what, it wasn't the old, thank God it wasn't the old type of thing in the old days where you didn't have, you couldn't put these pieces together so easily. And that's what computer, so I was lucky to be in the age of computer. Yeah, I mean, really, one. it's at the very beginning, because a lot of us, even on the radio side, we didn't have computers until the mid-90s, mm, you know, right. to do any of our that's right. stuff. So, yeah, 1989, you're putting this together with some uh, computer help. That's cr really cool. That's what makes it great. Um, and it's a little bit of touch of the change. It's not really black and white if you look at it. No, it's, it's not. And then you got the marker that goes tinge. New York, like it, as if it was uh, transparent. Uh, yeah, but almost like you were doing one of those proofs with the photographs, and you just mark it with a, a big marker, go New York yeah, on it. Yeah, It's at the top. I it's on type. the right side. Yeah, it, I picked that type, and also the Lou Reed type. I picked an outline type, so that the, the yes. background goes yeah, through. Yeah, so then the cool. background goes through. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's neat. Um, also about this, it's from area uh, zip code one double zero one nine. Which uh, over here it says Rockefeller Plaza, which I was wow. right before by saying Radio City Music Hall on that earlier album. So now we know. You know what's interesting? Curiosity about, served. I, I, there's a big thing going on with the lyrics. Now Lou is into E.E. E. Cummings. So if you have the cassette or the inner sleeve, the lyrics are set running into each yeah, other. Yeah, because. And the first, I don't think I have the inner sleeve there. No, but there's it's not like here. The first uh, letter of every line is capitalized so that that's what makes you be able to read easy. And. That's the first time it was ever done. I thought it was a genius idea. Well, let's go to the next one. Okay, and we're all involved. Again, Judith, myself, and Sylvia are on, all involved in all the rest of these pieces I'm showing. Okay, Magic and Lost, Louis Jean May photograph shot of in oh, Lou yeah. in Paris, and he did some t uh, this art, art, actually artwork with his photographs. Uh, Louis Jean May, yeah. gorgeous, gorgeous picture. Okay. And on this, you have uh, these symbols. Um, yeah, the are, alchemy symbols. Yeah. That was uh, Judith got together with Sylvia, and they picked out these symbols for the songs, which went with each song. Yeah. On the front cover, the type is frontwards and backwards, and the idea was to put it up to a mirror, and you'll able to see the type of the other. Right. Way. Oh, that's cool. Uh, it was kind of a cool thing. But um, yeah, the symbols were a big thing with alchemy research, and Judith and uh, Sylvia came up with that idea. I mean, what what what's what. Uh... How did they get to that point? Like, oh, let me use some alchemy symbols. 
Were they oh, looking Lou at Zozo or something his, like that? I think, you know, it's, Lou has this side of him, which is like, gets into these things, I think. You know what I mean? Well, it's yeah, like, yeah. You know, okay. And, and so it sort of fit. It, it sort of fit. I, I don't know. You know, it's funny. I don't remember the original. I, I know that Judith and Sylvia, definitely Sylvia came up with this idea of, of these alchemy symbols with Judith, and they both researched it. But I don't remember where the original... You know why the original well, concept, but it, it makes sense. I mean, it's kind of, and it's you know, it's a black and white album also with a touch of red in it. I thought that was interesting yeah. too. Just a subtle color. Lou, you know, Lou to me was black and white. I mean, he wasn't a full color picture. You know, what I mean, Lou is had this whole dark thing. You know, and 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 like the visualization with Lou. But there was no gray area with Lou. Black and white, but no right. gray. No gray. That's it's, it great was like point. either you know, yeah. That's that's an interesting personality trait that he had, and he. And he he was able to, with you working with Judas, Judith, uh, he yeah. was able to express his personality on these album covers. And you, know, you could, like again, you could, it was you really could, the yeah. three of us. I mean, Sylvia and I uh, and Judith had an amazing chemistry for design, and Sylvia was really, I mean, Lou really trusted her with being a creative director. So the whole thing really worked out marvelously. marvelously. The, the next one is the single, which came off uh, Magic yeah. and Lost, so good, so good. That was put out as special color uh, embossed almost thing right. it was a yeah. very special so, edition so actually the, that's a rare one too yeah. that's a that's a rare one to find you cannot find that one there are others you can find but that one is a you can actually put your fingers over and feel the the type set and and the uh the different printing on it exactly um and for those listening if you worked at a radio station, a lot of times you wouldn't get the complete album because there was always a rush. Sometimes you'd get the promo before the album was released so that you right. were already playing the track. This way people would go to the record store and start to look for it. So I get for whatever reason, they would send us these uh, promo discs. And the advantage was if I was in charge of archiving and putting the music into the system mm -hmm. or getting it you know, into the studio, yeah. you made it easy for me to find. And that's what it was about. And then some of us, as we were doing our jobs, now we would take these CDs. Sometimes we'd transfer them to what's called a cart, mm. right? And this way, it, it was like an eight-track design. We would go into the studio. We would take this and go from the uh, CD player. We'd level it all up to make sure it wasn't out of phase or anything like that. And we'd mm -hmm. record it in right. real time. Wow. No, no digital wow. transfer. And then we would take that and, and we would play them out of carts. It just made things easier. Also made it more difficult for the disc jockey to cheat, although mm -hmm. most of us knew how to get around that kind of thing. Right. And, and then we would take these promos, and if we didn't have any furniture in the house and no food, we'd bring them to the record store and sell them, make okay. some money that way. Wow. Then they put holes in them so you get caught easier, but oh. the record stores would still buy them because they wanted them. Other people valued them. So mm -hmm. that's how we somehow, that's how we, some of us uh, put food in the table, uh, you know? And then uh, there, I, in my collection at home, I have, I think, a copy of this. So oh, cool. not uncommon to, to have those promos. And this we, I love because it's metal. Uh, the metal pro yeah. pro only, uh, very limited edition. They right. printed this in Germany in metal. Um, and here, they, the United States didn't want to feel bad not doing it. So thank God they did it. But it's an elaborate package. By the way, uh, I have to bring in a name, Dennis Asienzo. Dennis did additional design with us on this packaging um, and also coming later with the Velvet Underground. I, I have to. All right, so it's the same photo that is on the cover of the other one, Magic and Lost, that's out of Germany. So this is made out of metal. Now, as you were showing me the fear of music, Mm -hmm. And that type of texture, I was right. wondering if anybody at the time thought, let's make it into a metal cover, because it, <laughs> it would have been right, a copy of that. But this is really cool. Now, the reason why this is awesome and it's in metal and, and the way it's put together in the packaging, for a while, when you would buy a CD, you felt like you were getting gypped, because mm. there was nothing better than the album. You had the album, the sleeve, the artwork that went over it. Uh, sometimes you'd, you'd be able to find the lyrics, information about the band, like the we did with the Ramones where you had the address of the fan club. Mm -hmm. Well, Lou uh, and whoever came up with this idea, this is brilliant because it gave you something of value. This is metal, you know, right. it's, 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 and then what do you call that? 
it's self screen like kind a, of thing. Uh, I forgot. Yeah, it, is, it had to be some sort of self screen on. And what's really amazing is that metal now it's aged. It, it gets like a very rough. Yeah, it's almost like surface. a surface. It's, it's, it's like an old ionized, dodge. Ionized. What do they call it? Patina. Something. Yeah. Like it's it's an yeah. old dodge. So it looks better older than yeah. when you get it shined up and yeah, clean. Yeah, now yeah. it's like really yeah. rough. Yeah, and you know people pay a lot of money to do that to objects to make them look oh, old. Really? Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. It's a big thing. You know. But uh, this is awesome. I love that. Um, it was pro well, only, and uh, oh. I think that uh, Lou and Sylvia were investigating memorial, the way treating memorial things in the world, the different ways they did it. And anyway, this came up to be the answer to this. Well, luckily we have our video Oh, the disc here, too. So the disc, gonna... also the disc. Yes, yes. The burnt disc, that's a big thing. It, um, it, uh, Dennis did that on his computer. Yeah, it's interesting. It, it, it's like paper, but it's done in a way that it's... Again, it's raised, and you can you can feel the texture of it. That's that's it's got texture to it. It's not just flat. And and I, I set the lyrics in Helvetica extra light, which is a gorgeous face. Helvetica in a very light extra light. So uh, that was attached in there with the booklet. What's interesting is, is as they press the metal, yeah, you you could still smell the the oil that wow. that was used in the pressing. It's it's very interesting. All right, let's move to the next one. Okay, now we have a book cover. Book that, cover. Yeah. This was. Anthony De Curtis wrote about this in a book that's out right now called Lou Reed, A Life, amazing book that uh, Judith and I and Sylvia are mentioned. Um, and anyway, he wrote about this book cover, which was put out uh, during the time of Magic and Lost, and that's the lyrics of Lou. Uh, won a lot of uh, book cover uh, design awards. Uh, the three of us worked on it. Matt Moharan did the photograph and uh, printed in, in gold and black, and the area where the type is was uh, semi uh, semi-gloss. Yeah. So it, g it gave a quality that was unreal. And if you are listening, once again, it's a profile picture and it almost has an old type of photo, uh, I guess, effect to it. Something that you would find in your photo collection when you got an old picture of grandma or grandpa and there's some yellowing on it mm -hmm. and it's sort of fading. And he's being somberly analytical in this. I just wonder what was on his mind. He's probably going, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go to Coney Island and get myself <laughs> a Nathan's hot dog. Because that's what I'd be thinking. Well, well like, you know, you've got to know, also, Matt Moharan was a very dark photographer. He worked with groups like MTV videos and things like that, very dark groups, I would call it. This was perfect for him. I mean, the feeling of a photographer uh, getting into the picture like that. Well, yeah. From Matt. In other words, for the for that photographer, the perfect subject. Perfect subject. Right, let's move no on to the, to the next one. Okay. So ah, the bananas are coming. So this is where we start with the Velvet Underground packaging. That's not the original cover. It's a promo slip, right? But you'll be able to see. But um, the metallic bananas. So we had this idea. Uh, Sylvia came up with the awesome idea of saying, "Well, foil is all over the factory." Let's get this banana in a metallic look and the letters. And, yeah. and we did a foil, uh, Judith and I bought this aluminum foil, pressed down the letters, pressed down on a clay molded banana by a student who did it. And mm -hmm. uh, these things were composited with a velvet uh, photograph background and became a whole new image. I thought it was very brilliant because it's a pure concept. Uh, it's not a forced concept. I mean, usually you always saw the Andy Warhol banana by itself. That was it in the story. Now we got a new, we got a new banana with a, with the way it was. The, the factory was foiled. And then you're using Roman numerals. See, this is going to be a problem with Super Bowls. By the time they get to <laughs> 1993, it's going to oh, look right. like this. That's right. And nobody will be able to figure it out unless you took Latin in, in high school. That's true. Uh, I noticed that, did you go, where did you get the uh, actual letters? Oh my God, so I go to the shop that had letters actually, and they had the font that goes along with the album. It's uh, Adobe Garamond. And I bought these letters, actually pasted them together, and I was very good at this, you could see, and just pasted them together on a board, pressed down the foil, then the photographer, Ted Chin, Ted Chin did a lot of his photography, he was able to take the uh, the shine out of it because yeah, it's very yeah, hard yeah. to shoot uh, foil, you know. I'll tell you what it is. What, it's almost like how the foil, foil has a shiny side and then it's got that, you know, dull side. Dull side. So he took the, the, the shiny out so it's looked, right. it looks dull. You're right. The way you spaced the velvet underground across with those letters that you got from the shop, 
it's amazing how, <laughs> how you kept it all straight. How you that's did the that. way that's the way I was I was very precise a really good whatever I did even Electra set when he pasted it on was everything was straight I, how long I did, did it take really you cool. to do that what how long did it take you to do that well you know what it didn't take that long but I, I I'll tell you the truth this is where traditional design works if I did that in computer or anybody did in computer it would take hours you know to make it look like that here it is just paste it down bat it up shoot it boom end of oh, story that's great yeah. let's go to the next one see that okay, that's so really now interesting we, oh now you got the the it's color form thing Yeah. Color forum concept uh, that yeah. Sylvia I don't, came I, up with. I don't know why people like the color forum. It was usually made for for girls at first, their little models, and then it uh, went over to I think superheroes or something like that. Yeah. So th this is made out of um, plastic material. Think color forum, mm -hmm. and then you have the velvet underground on the top, and you have all these little bananas. Like one almost peeled off. Do right. these peel off or they? Yeah, they can peel off. They right. can peel off. Yeah. So they're actually really like color. They're really, yeah, they're really oh, set wow. that way. And then the inside, the disc, day glow blue, uh, bananas yes. on a day glow yellow background. And then you got and the, the booklet insert, comes the in. Booklet. Yeah, you got a folded yeah. booklet. So this that is comes great. With now, it. I can tell you that this is the promo copy because it's got, got the, the hole, hole in it. it, which is prized by record stores. Like if you go mm. into the village, yeah, right. maybe on Bleecker Street, there's a record store. They love this kind of stuff. People like buying the radio promo versions because mm -hmm. they're like, oh, you know, I knew the right people kind of deal. Yeah, this was a limited edition also, so it was being sold. You know, it wasn't a pro only like the metal box. So. Yeah, and pale blue a... eyes. Sometimes I feel oh, so happy. Sometimes I feel I so it. sad. Sometimes I, I feel so happy, but mostly you just make me mad. It's a beautiful song, <laughs> right? You just make me mad. Now there was the, uh, we did a poster, uh, which won major awards. Billboard gave it the best poster of the year, the same thing. The poster is a composite again. It's a beautiful, won many awards. Um, uh, and uh, I don't have it here, but uh, you'll see it when you see the interview, but it's gorgeous. It's a, well, this I got oh, we got we got the box set. Well, Sorry, the, but, but, no, it's yeah. okay. So oh, the this box is the set CD comes box in. Set. That's the last piece of the puzzle. Peel up banana on the front. Andy Warhol's you come design. You in with a booklet. With the booklet the, with uh, oh yeah, great graphics. I, I love this. Let me tell you, I like the fact that you you give the fan an idea what it's like in a recording studio. This mm -hmm. is when they used. Multi-track tape. We have a, a kind of a, a tape player. You take the multi-track and it would mix it down in the uh, half inch or the quarter right. inch, right? See that? That would be your master over there. Um, but a good studio engineer would make sure that on the board, everything is marked up so you know exactly your potentiometers and where they're going, right? The cables have little ties on them. And then on, on the master tape box where you have mm -hmm. the multi-tracks, maybe it's a four track to eight track tape, whatever it right. might be. It's a gigantic box. And on the front is where all the notes would be. So somebody oh. must have taken the the picture of these various boxes. That's right. And, and so we designed that with a group called Smay Vision. And so Sylvia, Judith and I are involved with a group called Smay Vision. We put that package together, but it's, um, the, the, I, I love the tape box visualization. Like you said, it's like, it's like raw. Yeah, you know, it's here, like this is it. This, this is it. This know? is this is really cool because it's got you know just regular handwriting on it, and then you got your scribbles, right? Because right. you got it wrong, and you're just not going to keep changing the the, uh, the 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 label, right? Right. So it got it has Mayfair Recording Studios Inc. Seven hundred one Seventh Avenue, New York, New York one double o three six, which is like one double o three six. I think that's 46th and 6th. I'm pretty sure. I, okay. I could be wrong. But anyway, this would be great because um, 46th and 7th. Um, I'm going to go try to find that address. Wow. I do that. When I see an album cover and it's from the New York area, I try to find that location. Like wow. the physical graffiti building sure. or, you know, if, if it was a... There's like the Doors album, I think, is one of the areas around here. Um, mm -hmm. I'll also try to find the the, the uh, location of the TV shows, like 1049 oh, wow. yeah, Park yeah. Avenue, 
and then over I think on 86th Street where the Jeffersons uh, lived and the Drummonds for uh, those those kind. I love doing that kind of stuff. I'll do the same thing oh, with albums. Great. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, this oh. uh, this this, uh, this gets reprinted a lot and sold a lot. This this edition box set is constantly redone, resold. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a major print job. The, uh, I don't know which one this is, but I, I love the cover. Oh, all right. So on this particular CD is Venus in Furs, Prominent Men, Heroin, I'm Waiting for the Man, Wrap Your Troubles, All Tomorrow's Parties, Lou Reed guitar, harmonica, Sterling Morrison guitar, John Davies, Kale Viola, and I don't, I can't, Garena, I can't, I can't make that out. But here's, it's monophonic, mm. and it's on seven and a half inch reel. Okay, two tracks, and it's got um, a one mil acetate, eighteen hundred feet, seven inch reel. So those are the smaller reels. Right. And if you put the camera on the uh, on the reel to reel machine, that's what we would play them back on. Mm -hmm. and, and there were occasions when you would get a reel to reel from somebody, right? And and play the track on the air. That was always fascinating because that meant wow. that it wasn't even put on CD right. or onto vinyl yet. Wow. You had the one of the copies of the actual master, the mm -hmm. mix down. Now that's that's really it's fascinating. A, it's a great stuff. set. Yeah, that that that's. I got to say, besides the metal one. This is this is right up there. I'd yeah, want to. I'd want to have it in my collection, even if I never played it. And a lot of people do that, you know. They'll buy the collection. Oh, and and, and the booklet the book that comes great in. Graphics. Yeah, the that's book really great. Good. Did you put the book together? Yeah, we put all of us put that. Wow. Book. Made yeah, the, this, the book is that's the, a lot of work. Yeah, that, that was that, a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, that is a, a lot, lot of posters. That's the centerpiece. It was like I, we go into, Smay Vision was right next to me, so we work with them, but it was like you go into their office and the posters are all over the floor. You know, it's like, you know, just strip them together, man. Then we then you think. have uh, All Tomorrow's Parties uh, uh, backed with I'll Be Your Mirror, The Velvet Underground, and Nico. Mm -hmm. Is that it? I think so. Yeah. Um, but it's on the Verve record. I, I just like the fact that you got the 45 with the yeah. Verve. That's cool. But... Um, Right now, uh, to bring you up to date, where uh, Sylvia, Judith, and I have our Velvet Underground design in in a, a event in New York called the Velvet Underground Experience that goes from October 10th to December 30th, 2018, a very historic uh, um, gallery event that's going on now in New York. Um, and uh, we're still designing. I mean, Judith and I are together designing. We're in. By the way, we're in now, we're in the MoMA, AIGA, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Archival Permanent Collections. Nice. And uh, we're getting a lot of respect. And I've just put up, uh, uh, I think it's very important with our lives, uh, 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 a site called Vinyl Talk, which is now on Facebook, which will be expanding to other venues. Yeah. And uh, well, I, I think actually we're... planning with uh, Pat, Pat and uh, Zach to work together on that also and the other on some other venues with that vinyl talk all about vinyl well yeah anybody's got anything on vinyl just yeah. go it's on facebook right now so you just go to vinyl, vinyl talk, talk one word search mm -hmm. it out easy boom become a member and if you got any if you like vinyl you're gonna love the yeah. site it's got everything about. and the making vinyl event which i judge with judith every year that's another big vinyl event going on every year in new york and um proud to be a part of that and it'll, we're, we're talking vinyl here you know yeah, and, and, and um, you know... Well, thanks for having me on, Zach. It's always Pat. a pleasure. This is this is probably, for me, the, the most fun I have with uh, music, is mm. the the wrappings and, and, you know, looking at the information on it and the addresses and the fan clubs and where the, the photos come from, the different types of art that, that's uh, part of it, the different types of, uh, I guess you you would say, materials well, used. We had, we had, you know, I got to bring something in that we did. Howell, Howell Gallery in May 2017 had an event. It's called, it's a long way to the top, which is from ACDC. But which uh, is it's about a one life. of Spencer's favorite songs. Exactly. You know what we're going to do after we wrap up? I'm just going to play. It's a long way oh, to okay. the top. Okay, and then, but it was a, all about our music life with a, 
uh, a, a what do you call a business point thing, and then we told the stories. Now, what we're talking about here is very interesting because it's about these stories behind each of these pieces that we've designed, and that's what makes it it's so interesting. I'm planning to do other things with this tour, uh, with, probably with Sylvia involved, and maybe John Holmstrom too, that we did originally. But it's an important event, and it's very educational too for music. It's great. And people learn about it. The stories that people don't know about. That's the, oh, the, the, the stories behind the stories yeah. are always the most fascinating of all the stories. Yeah. Three, two, one, zero, Broadcasting from the Rock and Roll Bomb Shelter. Yeah, I'm ready. I wanna rock! Surrounded by radioactive biscuits and the world famous Rock Eyes. Located 40 feet beneath the radio station. It's the Big Fat American Rock Show. With your host, the Doc of Rock, the Professor, everyone's favorite mad music magician, crazy uncle, and your best friend in the whole wide world, Zach Martin. Well,